Hey, what is up, yo? Dr. Mike here, mad scientist of metal. Today, I will be worshipping tape over compression for you. The thing is, in metal productions, in metal mixing, compression is the key to make instruments powerful and fit in the heavy metal mix. If instruments are not compressed enough, and that's based on my experience over the years, they will fall out and will just sound thin and powerless. At the same time, however, overcompression can and will make instruments thin, too pushed out and frankly boring and annoying. Overcompression overall as well will suck all the dynamics out of your mix, so you will end up with a flat sounding mix, which is not exciting to the listener because the movement is not preserved. This has been a theme in my recording and mixing career. I've always been super, super disturbed by the increasing amount of compression applied in heavy metal. And I always wanted to find a different way of preserving that heaviness, yet adding breath and movement with still a really heavy character. And so today I want to show you the alternative way of doing that. Something that you can implement today in both of your recordings, home recordings, mixes, and even masters and discover a cool approach to dynamics in modern metal mixes. Tape and tape emulation particularly also allows you to sound different and unique because most of the producers almost over compress and that to me has to end at some point. So today we'll be showing you a mix which I've done ages ago and I will be showing you how compression and limiting and serious compression sounds in comparison to tape, saturation and transformer clipping. A little brief into what is the difference between compression and tape saturation or clipping. If we look at this picture here, with compression your signal exceeds the threshold uh, and the way you set up attack and release times allows you to essentially squash the signal down. So the peaks become smaller and the overall signal becomes less dynamic. So essentially it's one of the ways to increase loudness and volume because uh, the difference between the loud part and the quiet part as in this incompressed signal becomes smaller. However, however, that also leaves breath and dynamics between these quieter and louder parts affected. And therefore, it's super easy to lose that. Clipping, on the other hand, does something similar, however, a little bit differently. If you look at this graph here, you got your signal, and if you push it hard into a clipper or any distortion chain, you can even use a guitar stomp pedal. Essentially, the top of the peak is getting cropped out. So you're getting rid of that top of the transient. And the rest of the signal gets pushed in by an addition of extra second and third harmonics. Therefore, your signal becomes richer and louder as well. However, the dynamics is not impacted as much as with compression because clipping reacts faster. Now, there is hot clipping, which essentially chops out the whole signal exceeding the threshold, or there is soft clipping, which would allow some of it to pass, similar to how you got limiting versus compression. Now, this is all good and well. Theory uh, sounds cool, but what is important for us is how would that sound. So, let's jump onto that mix uh, that I've made years ago and do some comparisons. This is the mix for my metal band, Gift of Madness. We've been doing progressive, modern, groove sort of metal. Uh, and without too much uh, talking, let's just have a listen to how instruments sound without any extra processing beat compression or limiting or clipping in the setting. Have a listen. Yeah, 
doesn't sound bad at all, but it doesn't sound finished to me. So drums do not have that much of impact. Guitars could be a bit more aggressive and bass could kind of fill in the space a bit more. And that's when uh, additional saturation or compression, as some of you use, uh, comes into the play. And uh, this is something that I want to highlight as less of an experienced engineer. I was not applying to my channels. Once I started doing that, when I, once I started pushing things a bit further, my mixes became more powerful and more heavy. But let's focus on one instrument at a time. And I will be doing level matched comparisons for you so that you can understand different implementations of that sound. Let's start with the drums and play them in isolation. And now let's do typical uh, drum bus compression here. 4 to 1 ratio, uh, 10 millisecond attack, so somewhat slow. 300 milliseconds release, somewhat fast. Uh, and that's, a, that's your typical SSL bus compressor. Have a listen. couple of things that I'm noticing. Firstly, drums become more static. They do become thicker and a bit bigger. However, at the same time, they become smaller, if that makes any sense. Well, uh, your kicks and your snares get pushed a bit more, but overall dynamics, overall breath and jump in volume from part to part is pretty much lost. Let's take this to an extreme and have a listen with a limiter on, which essentially is a compressor with infinite ratio. So it chops all the peaks completely. See, I don't like that. And I understand how this is applicable. It's much easier to use such a drum sound in the mix. Uh, it fits so much easier. Um, however, at the same time, all the kicks lose impact and the snares as well. Uh, you have seen how uh, heavy limiter acts on those snare hits. And that just uh, loses the impact to me. So I've never been a fan of this sound, although I understand the implications of that. Now, let's compare that with some tape saturation. Uh, for reference, I matched levels so that you got your tape here. It is pushed really bloody hard, but then I got 8.6 decibel of gain reduction so that levels are somewhat consistent across that. So let's listen to it with the tape. Right? So this, as you can hear, serves somewhat similarly to compression and limiting. However, uh, tape provides the impact that was lost throughout the compression. All the kicks become fatter, bigger, more aggressive, yet there is still dynamics preserved. Same deal with the snare. It doesn't lose the impact, doesn't lose the attack, which was completely lost within limiting. And partially that's because tape does uh, soft clipping alongside with adding a lot of harmonics, so some form of distortion that is blended in. And some of you may want a cleaner sort of sound, and that's fine. You can push tape less or you can use something else as well. But those sort of harmonics and saturations allow instruments to cut through the mix a little bit better. Plus, this works well on smaller speakers where second and third order of harmonics go up high in the spectrum and fill in the mids. 
Let's use another tape here. This bad boy. Again, similar sort of deal. I prefer the first tape a bit better. It's a different model. It behaves differently, provides more tops. Whereas this one is slightly less crisp, so uh, it may need a bit more tweaking. But it still retains the transients, man, which is super important. Finally, I would like to demonstrate a bit of a transformer saturation. Also sounds kind of cool. Uh, I like how it allows the snare to punch through with attack, but it kind of thickens up its tail and just makes its body bigger. Let's go and jump into those guitars now and check out what compression does to them. Firstly, bypass. Very much a modern metal sound. SSL bus compressor with slow attack, 30 milliseconds. Fast release, about 200 milliseconds. It just squeezes those guitars and makes them kind of thick and full. But to me, they, again, lose impact and sound a bit muddy. I rarely use this technique on guitars. I just don't love that sound. Let's compare that with some tape. So there is something about those tape plugins on guitars, especially pushed so hard. You can see I'm clipping it really, really, really aggressively, and I don't mind that at all. Kinda adds a bit of a sparkle, a bit of a mid saturation, a bit of a grit, a bit of a forwardness. And again, they still pump and breathe nicely. And they didn't with the compressor. Transformer saturation as well. Just a different one here. kind of pushes the mids in a pleasant way. It rolls off the top end a little bit, and I am aware of that with this particular plugin. So you have to be careful. This is not transparent by any means. At the same time, dynamics is retained. Finally, bass. Jump on the bass and check it out with a limiter. Bypass. Nice and fat. Limited. Without. It's kind of not too bad, but still it chops off the attack, so the, the bass becomes more static quite clearly with the limiter. Tape. Without. It 
sounds a bit gnarlier and a bit nicer in the mids. And again, it doesn't lose the attack. Finally, a transformer saturation. I prefer this plugin on bass over any others so far. Really sounds good, brings up the tops and uh, makes the bass more dynamic and more fat as well, more round. Now, finally, I would like you to have a listen to the mix. Firstly, with limited bass, limited drums, compressed guitars. And then we'll use tape and then we'll use uh, saturators, and then we'll use tape, and then we will, and then we'll use tape, and then we'll use uh, transformers, and we'll be able to compare what's the best in the mix. Let's jump on tape now. Sounds cool to me. Finally, Transformers. Kinda leaves the drums a little bit weaker, so that would require more tweaking but still retains the dynamics. Let's go back and compare it with limited bass and compressed guitars and drums. See, immediately it sounds more static the snare does not punch through enough. I don't feel it. I don't feel the vibe and the energy anymore. And that also sounds very typical. It sounds like the majority of metal productions out there, modern metal productions these days. So I will let you make the decisions. I will let you vote in comments for what you prefer the best within this scenario. And obviously do not consider this as a final. I just prepared it for the purposes of demonstration, obviously, for proper mix, that would be tweaked and tweaked and endlessly tweaked until it sounds the best. But at least you get the flavors and the idea of how non-traditional ways of making the mix sound thick and heavy work. And hopefully you can extract something out of it and use that for your next metal mix. Thanks for watching and cheers.